All right, guys, in this video, what I want to do is take a look at how we can make a grass texture. Now, this is going to be ideal for games. It's going to be okay for movies and media and that sort of thing. The main downside to it is that you don't get that sort of waving in the breeze kind of grass. It's just a, a flat floor texture. Um, so what I want to do to start with is make a new canvas, and I want to make this as a base 2 size. In other words, you know, 512, 1024, 2048. Um, the reason for this is that it makes it easier to compress and optimize the file itself. Um, and it's also going to let us do a few cool things with Photoshop. Um, the reason why I'm going with 2048, which for a game texture is reasonably large, is because it's a whole lot easier to downsample the texture to something smaller than it is to try and make it bigger to eke out some more resolution. So 2048, 2048, 72 pixels per inch is fine. and go OK. So I'm going to be met with a blank document, um, uh, sorry, a blank white document unless I've changed my settings. Um, so I'm just going to make a new layer because there is nothing worse than doing a whole lot of drawing on the background layer and then trying to get it off. Um, so what I want to do first up is set up my brush. So as it is at the moment, it's just going to be a solid, solid brush. Even though I'm using a, a tablet, I've disabled the pressure. Um, yeah, it's, it's not going to be very conducive to blades of grass. So if I press F5, I'm going to open up my brush menu. And the first thing I want to take a look at is my spacing. So if I increase my spacing, uh, you'll see how it's going to place individual dots around. This is basically the space between the individual uh, stamps. That, that Photoshop uses to, to brush. Um, if I increase the spacing even more, it's going to spread them out. Um, and if I decrease it, then it's going to make a smoother line. So, you know, if I have, say, about 50%, it's going to be a very jittery line. Whereas if I have a, so this one here is a very jittery line, which I've done with 50% spacing, and this one's down to 2%, I think. Um, which is a nice smooth line. So it does have its uses. I tend to set it to less in, in most instances. So about 10 is nice for me. Um, if you have an older computer, you're going to hit some struggles with performance of a smaller, a, a smaller spacing. So just be mindful of that, that it can slow down your machine. This is a pretty straightforward process. So it shouldn't be too bad on, a, on an older machine. So uh, clear that out. So the first thing I want to do is, well, the next thing I want to do is take a look at my shape dynamic. And I'm going to come over here to control. And I'm going to set that to fade. Now, what this does is every 25 stamps, or over, this, over the course of 25 stamps, it's going to reduce the brush size to zero. If I increase this to, well, let's let's put a couple down. So over 25 stamp, it's, it's going to reduce to zero. If I increase this to 200, it's going to give me a, a longer stroke. Now, if you're finding that your fade control isn't working and that it just keeps jumping back to pen pressure, come up to the top here, and there's a button which is going to control whether it's on pen pressure or not. Um, so... If you disable that, it should enable you to get onto the fade. Um, so I reckon if I set this based on my uh, 10, 10 brushes to about, uh, my 10% spacing to about 120, that's going to give me a pretty nice proportion uh, uh, between width to height for my individual blades of grass. If I decrease that, so if I decrease the uh, size of the brush, it gets shorter. If I increase it, it gets longer. Um, it's just to do with the, the proportion of going down to zero. Um, okay, and then the next thing I want to do is look at my color dynamics. So I just want to enable them, and I want to set these to fade as well. Now, just so we can see, with We've got a 
pretty good fade between the red and the black, but it happens pretty much entirely in the first quarter. Um, so that's not what I would would really want for my grass texture. So just to dial it back to the other extreme, if I set it up to 120, I only get that black right at the tip um, because it's not actually reaching that black color until 120 steps in, which is the same as our length of our fade. So if I set this to about oh, less than a half, so maybe 50 out of our 120, so that gives me a fairly good uh, transition up the blade of the grass and then you know I'll have that new growth on top. I've got a few settings here which I've just set up just to give a little bit of variation so you can see this in some of the blades of grass here how it's got that striping effect. Um, so you're not going to see that when you're actually looking at the texture from far away and especially if you down sample it. Um, it just gives a little bit of potential color variation and, and just makes things a, a little bit nicer. Um, low numbers are going to help you out here because if you have it set to something too extreme, so let's go, I don't know, 15, it becomes really obvious um, and it looks out of place. When you're messing with it, just so you know, hue is going to alter the color, whether that's red or green or blue or whatever. Saturation is going to be the intensity of that color and then brightness is going to be how white or black it is. Um, so yeah, I just want to keep those at relatively low numbers. There'll be a little, little bit of variation in there, which is, which is nice. Um, yeah, and that should be all I need to set up for my brush. So clear that out. The next thing I want to do is look at my colors. So naturally working with grass, I want to be working with greens. Um, natural full 100% green is going to be pretty intense. Um, so we want to dial this back a little bit. And a piece of advice for when you're actually selecting your colors is that you want to keep contrast fairly minimal. Um, the main reason for this is because if you have grass which has a lot of bright patches and a lot of dark patches then you know your main character or your hero or whatever can get washed out and it can get lost in this background just the same you also want to make sure that it fits in with your art style overall so that involves you know doing a bit of research and making sure that you know if you're working on a cartoonish brightly colored vivid game that your that your background and your grass matches that or if it's a dark and gloomy and you know quite quite uber wild sort of game that you that your grass matches that so I've already established a couple of colors that I want to use for this. So 132702 is going to be my dark. And then my light is going to be 84C801. And okay. So because we're working thick to thin, I want to make sure that my dark color is on top and my lighter color is on the back and that should work as my blades of grass. So now when it comes time to painting it's a little bit messed up because even if I paint something that I want to be in the background it's not going to do it unless I paint it first and you know with the random nature of grass that's going to be really difficult to to paint in naturally. Fortunately there is a very easy setting that we can do to introduce this for us, this, this occlusion. So if I change my brush mode to lighter color, now what I can do is automatically paint behind the blades of grass, depending on you know how, how light they are, how dark they are. In other words, the closer to the ground it is, the more likely it is to be covered up by something over, over the top. So this is gonna be a really nice, easy way to um, you know, give our give our grass some occlusion. Okay, so I'm gonna grab that, clear it out, delete it, making sure that I'm on my blank layer still, and just select a reasonably appropriate brush size for my grass. That'll do. And now I just want to go in and paint my my grass. What you want to do when you're painting your grass is avoid patterns. Um, 
And so when I say that, we're making a seamless texture, which is going to be applied across a very large surface. If we have clusters where it's very bright or very thick or, or dense or whatever, and then clusters where it's not as dense, the human eye is going to pick it up really easily and you're going to get this really noticeable pattern. It, it just looks a bit messy and gnarly. So just make sure that you try and do it as evenly as you can. If you get a bit, like if you're having a bit of trouble um, about where you can place stuff and, and that sort of thing and what direction stuff should be going in, um, put down a layer of the clouds filter and then just kind of paint from uh, using that as a basis of like where the, the uh, thicker areas of grass should be and, and where they won't be as thick. Um, I'm not going to do that for this for this tutorial. I'm going to go freehand. But what I do want to make sure is that I um, set up a... What I want to do is set up a boundary about... Okay? Where, you know, I, I can do whatever I want in here. But as soon as I get to the edge, I want to avoid that. Where it, it clips onto the edge. Because it's going to show up in my in my texture as being a whole heap of grass along these specific lines has been cut so yeah so basically with those couple of rules in mind I just want to go in and paint grass just going every which way so I'll speed this section up now when I'm doing this I need to make sure that I'm doing doing the brush strokes with a fair bit of confidence in other words, I want to avoid stuff like that where it's just sort of weird and noodly. Um, and I want to avoid, you know, partial strokes. I just want to go nice and quick, strong. You can do this with the mouse. Um, yeah, that's okay. Um, nice quick strokes. Doing the full blade of grass should be fine. All right, so now what I want to do is extend this uh, texture beyond that, that bounding. Um, so I want to set my layer style to lighter color, just the same as the brush. I'm going to hide out that background layer because it's white, it's the lightest color. Um, and now I press Control J. This duplicates the layer with its layer style settings on it. So it's going to keep that lighter color on it. And then what I want to do is go to Filter, Other, Offset. Now you can offset this by any amount you want. I usually go for for a canvas like this, maybe 128 by 128, um, just because it lets me do it in incremental steps at a time. And so if I keep doing that, I'll end up with something like this. Make sure that when you enable your offset, you set it to wrap around so that it doesn't lose anything that exceeds the bounds of the page. It just loops it onto the other side. This is what's going to make doing a seamless texture really easy. Um, so I'm going to take another duplicate of the original layer and I'm going to transform this one by rotating it 90 degrees, maybe moving it offset a little bit. And then I'm going to offset it some more. I just want to get a reasonably good cover of grass, just making sure that I avoid, you know, bare patches like this area on the left here. Um, and what I can do if I want to avoid stuff like that, because I'm working on like a, a perfect diagonal, if I press J and then just rotate the whole canvas, even though it's offsetting a little bit, that's, that one's not actually working for me. Uh, let's try this one here. So, Control J, duplicate. There we 
we go. I can get a, a, a much nicer cover of grass. Now, I've covered up a fair proportion of the of the canvas and I'm reasonably happy with it, but I've got a couple of gaps in here, so I'm just going to make a new layer, set it to our lighter color, just for occlusion, and I'm just going to fill these in manually. You can, you know, if you position stuff out well enough, um, fill it in like that. I just find it easier this way. So now I've got a fairly even covering of grass all over the image. So what I want to do now is I just want to grab some of these uh, layers and then just press Control U. And I just want to manipulate the the hue and the saturation of them, just uh, and and the brightness, just to give a little bit of variety, you know, give give the illusion of some some dead grass here and there. It doesn't have to be perfectly even all the way through, so I can deliberately make some grass quite dark, and that's going to make it, you know, give it some depth. Um, and so, like, the the wonderful thing about this technique is, like, if you just make it dark, it automatically gets pushed to the back, which is really nice for just chucking in some shadows. Um, usually, when you want to make something darker you'd want to increase the saturation a little bit and just the same I can make stuff a little bit brighter and it gets br brought to the front and I just want to crank up the saturation of it and just make it seem a little bit more lively and vibrant on the top uh, probably a little bit too much Alright, and the last thing that we want to do is fill in the background layer. So we want to make sure that this is a fairly dark color because otherwise our grass isn't going to show through. If it's black there's going to be a little bit too much contrast. So if I set that to either a really dark green maybe something like that. Um, it can look pretty good or if we shift it to uh, I mean not an intense brown but just um, you know something something that gives the illusion of some dirt um, that can also work or just underlaying a dirt texture underneath um, I reckon I'm gonna stick with green here and just keep it nice and nice and verdant and I'm just gonna fill in some of these gaps here All right, so if I want to take a look and see how this is going as a as a seamless texture, because I can see one right in there. I just want to make sure that I cover up any seams. Um, I can press Alt Control Shift E, and that takes a screenshot of the entire image. And so I can just do my offset again and just pan through and just see if I can see any seams. But everything looks pretty good. Um, and that, that gives you a pretty, pretty realistic grass texture that you can just tile away. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, just leave a comment below. Um, but yeah, thanks guys.